six players have qualified. Wesley Sauer is the champion. Gukesh wins the tournament. Ibi Sara Asalbeeva is the winner. That it's only two places left. You can feel the pressure here for a place in September's grand finale. Next move, checkmate. Who is going to join them in Berlin? From Europe and Africa. You're about to find out. And that's it, handshake. Welcome to chess most dramatic format. So much drama. This is Armageddon. The Armageddon Championship Series has set the sport on fire this year. Three events have already decided six players who will be returning to the World Chess Club Berlin come September for the inaugural Grand Finale. Now it's the turn of Europe and Africa to decide the last two players who will be joining them there. Eight of the region's best players about to take on each other and the clock over seven days of intense competition. What makes the Armageddon series so special? Playing two blitz games and then immediately the Armageddon means that there's basically no room for mistakes. The pieces are going to fly. What makes the great blitz chess player? Well, if I knew the answer to this question, I would uh, use it myself. Quick reflexes, good time management. You have to spot the tactics quickly and put your opponent under pressure. Unbelievable game. Who are you looking forward to be playing this week? Duda and Vashela Graf, because I have not had many chances to play against them yet. Maxime Vashela Graf, he's in my opinion one of the best blitz players in the world. So. I want to play against the uh, finalists, so that means uh, I will be there. What is going to happen? How do you win this championship? Yeah, my biggest strategy is not to have strategy, but pretend to have one. Play fast and get lucky. It is over. What will victory mean for you? That I have my nerves under control. Winning is what feeds me in chess uh, as a top player. As always, the fourth qualifying event featured the double elimination format, with match winners progressing to the next round and losers going into the lower bracket to play again for a chance to stay in the tournament. Expectations were riding high for the Europe and Africa qualifier, and the action didn't disappoint. Day one opened with British number one Michael Adams losing to Poland's top player Jan Christoph Duda. The second match was an all-German affair, Vincent Keimer beating Alexander Donchenko 2-0. Day two got underway with the matchup between creative geniuses Jordan Van Voorhees and his opponent, 27-year-old Ricard Report. I am Richard Report. I am from Hungary, currently representing Romania, and I am 27 years old. I got introduced to the game of chess at about four years old, and then later played my first tournament, I believe, when I was nine years old. And I spent most of my childhood, you know, sitting over a board uh, looking at chess. To me, chess up to today is a beautiful game, so it still fascinates me in some levels. So when someone tells you, ah, you can do for the rest of your life, and you can make a decent living, or whatever, and you might be the the best or one of the best in the world in this and, and you know this is all you will do. Of course it sounds amazing yeah? and they proposed to me that I could uh, have my life in chess. Yeah. The contest began with Van Voorhees taking the first game by a checkmate. Reports bounced back in the second to win it and set up the first Armageddon decider of Europe Africa week. We join the game with reports on the right playing black. Simon Williams and Yvanka Huska are in the commentary box. The heart rates, they're both quite high. This is something very unique for our Armageddon series. We keep an eye on just how nervous the players are getting because it is very scary being in that arena, trust me. Well, the King's got to attack the Knight here and if they repeat the position three times, it is a draw. And that means that Jordan has to go into this ending where it's equal material, but generally the Bishop is better than the Knight. Why is the Bishop better than the Knight? Because you have pawns on both sides of the board. The Bishop is a long range piece. It can act on both sides straight away, but the Knight is a short range piece. So it can only work in one area of the board. And you can see that Black is now going to win a pawn. This is looking very very, very promising for Rickard at the moment. He's a pawn up. If he keeps his cool, he will be okay, but he's getting quite short of time here. He is, and uh, take a look at the manoeuvring that Jordan has done. He's actually, oh my, oh my goodness me. Oh, I, I, It's I, a race, I, we're off to the races, and unfortunately, Black is winning, and oh, you can see the shake of the head. 
Oh, Richard nodding there. He's worked it all out. It's a win for him. He will queen faster. And uh, that's why Jordan could not grab that bishop with the knight. I love that though. One player was shaking, the other one was nodding. We, we're clear and we have a result. We know now that Rickard wins two games in a row to go through to the next round. That just left the final match of the opening round between Germany's online qualifier, Matthias Bluebaum, and France's Maxime vachier le -Grave. The veteran French player dominating play to win 2-0. Things didn't go much better for Bluebaum the following day when he lost his lower bracket game against Jordan van for East. Britain's Michael Adams was also eliminated from the tournament by Alexander Donchenko. Day four saw the matchups between the four unbeaten players. First to the board, 18 year old Vincent Keimer of Germany, the youngest player in the tournament, and Jan Krzysztof Duda of Poland. I'm Jan Krzysztof Duda, Grandmaster from Poland, the current uh, rating one in this country. I've been playing chess for almost 20 years right now. The most glorifying uh, moment in my career is, of course, winning the World Cup in Krasnaya Poljana 2021. Winning the World Cup is probably the biggest achievement of Polish chess, at least after World War II, and, you know, beating Magnus Carlsen, back then world champion in the semi-finals, and then winning it in the finals against Serik Karyakin was an exceptional feeling, and, yeah, and I wish, you know, I can repeat that. The Polish player took complete control of game one, forcing his opponent to concede. That meant the 18-year-old German needed to win the next game. We join it with Keimer playing white. Checkmate is looming and there you see Vincent. He sits up and okay, he defends his rook, but he knows his position is falling apart. He's material down and uh-oh, the queens are kind of come off. And if the queens come off, that is only bad news because when you're material up, you want to swap pieces off. White's one chance was to keep the queen on the board and attack Black's king. Now Black is getting ready to castle as well. He might even castle his king, and he does at last. Um, he's taken a long time to do it, but he's got it safe. The time situation, Vincent he, under 10 seconds. He under 10 seconds. I mean, he only has one hope in the position, and that's got those two pawns there on the left. You know, get them rolling and hope for the best. Praying is not some, not a good plan, but sometimes it's the only plan. Sometimes you just got to pray when there's nothing else that's working, and he's got to roll those pawns down the board, rolling, rolling, rolling. Like but a river. Like, a, yeah, a, a river of pawns, but they're, they're not that scary, the white pawns, and at the end of the day, black has Ooh, an extra piece, and, and now the knight comes in at the end of the game. Very smooth victory by dude. There. I know. Really smooth. That left the other match of day four between Ricard Report and Maxime vachier le -Grave. Ricard dominating the opening game. That meant Report just needed a draw in the next game. Can he get a queen if Black can push the pawn all the way? He has. He's going for a queen. And now the bishop comes in dominating that knight there. We call this the knight stable, this lovely position. And white, the white knight can't move anywhere because it'll be captured. Well, it does move somewhere, but it is captured. This is looking very, very bad for white. There's nothing to be done. It's a, it's a blockade now. I think they can agree to a draw. Well done, Ricard. Brilliant result. That defeat relegated vachier le -Grave to the lower bracket but he won his next match against Alexander Donchenko to set up a game against Jordan van for East, who had also lost to report earlier in the tournament. I'm Maxime Vachiragrave. I'm from Paris, France. I've been a chess player since I'm five years old, also World Blitz chess champion in 2021. You can never reach absolute perfection in chess, so you're always pursuing improvement uh, year after year. I have some memorable moments. I won in a tiebreak against Jan Christoph Duda, who's actually playing here. And it was in Warsaw, so his own country, so it was uh, really intense. But of course, uh, it's not the only one, and I hope there are many more to come as well. Both players put on a show that justified them making it to the penultimate day of competition. 
Vachier Le Grave took the first game before Van Verriest won the second to set up an Armageddon decider. White has to find some way in. Okay, he's trying to get his queen into position, but Black is trying to exchange queens. Good tactic because you are um, basically two pawns up and he's exchanging rooks off. This is getting worse for Jordan because, oh no, his oh king no. is so weak here. Is this king gonna survive, seriously? No way. I mean, for starters, all Maxime needs to do is trade off rooks and uh-oh, uh -oh. now the king is going walkabout. Walking it kingy. Is not looking good. Look, there you go. Oh and no. then the king has to go up to the oh no. sixth row and, and uh-oh. And you know what? The king is not a dog. It doesn't like walkies. <laughs> it doesn't like walkies when there's queens on the board. And Black has one white's queen. Jordan realizes he's out, but a very gentleman handshake and a smile there between the two friends. And uh, Maxime Fru with that Armageddon win. Back in the upper bracket, the final two unbeaten players, Report and Duda, were facing each other to decide who would go straight to the final and who would need to play Lagrave for a chance to set up a rematch. Report made the better start, playing brilliantly to win the first game and put himself within touching distance of the final. We join the second with Report on the attack again, playing the white pieces. I can't see any way that Black can't get out of a draw here because what White's threatening to do is just check the Black King and okay, this this is the only chance now, but you can still check the Black King. Okay, he's kept the Rooks. Rooks on the seventh rank, Rooks like White's got are normally devastating. They're just too, too strong because they stop the Black King from ever escaping. They have checkmate ideas. Five Black is five seconds. seconds. Three seconds. Okay, he just pushes his pawn and-, and He's going for the draw, which is, this is a brilliant way to get the draw. He doesn't even need to win. And now he can swap the idea to the other side. <laughs> Very oh. crafty. And obviously if he needed to win this position, Ricard would be doing something else, but he doesn't need to win. And I don't think Black can do anything to escape the draw. So they agree a draw. Brilliant game from Rickard. A comprehensive performance by the 27-year-old to make it straight through to the final. Join us after the break to find out who he'll play there as we catch up with all the action from the final day of competition at the Europe and Africa qualifying event in Berlin. Welcome back to the World Chess Club Berlin for the climax of Europe and Africa week, the final qualifying event in this year's Armageddon Championship Series. It's make or break day for the three players left in the tournament, with the last two places in the grand finale still up for grabs. 27-year-old Ricard Report had been the player of the week so far, winning all his matches in convincing fashion. Guaranteed a plane ticket back to Berlin in September, he'll be joined there by either Maxime Vachier Le Grave or Jan Christoph Duda. Both players had lost to report already, leaving them to face each other to get a chance to play him again and secure that remaining slot for their championship climax. Vachier Le Grave threatened to take the opening game of their match with some aggressive play, but Duda held on to force the draw. We pick up the action in the second game. Le Grave on the right playing black. Simon Williams and Yvanka Huska in a commentary box. Is black losing a pawn now as well? Nine, eight, seven, okay. Oh. Yeah, he is going to be losing a pawn, but he's saying, you know what? I can get compensation by mobilizing, activating the rook, putting it on E2. And decision time for Duda. Does he get greedy? And no, he wants to keep control. You've got to move, Maxime. You've got five, five seconds. seconds. They're both under 10 seconds now. It looks like White has all the pressure. Maxime is teetering on the edge of going home here. Duda wins a pawn. What can Maxime do? He activates his rook, but White is a pawn up in this ending. There's very good chances to convert this. Maxime, though, is a brilliant endgame player. He's very resilient, and the more pawns that get exchanged, the better for Black, and this seems to help Black a lot here. Black is now winning his pawn up. It must be heading towards a draw, but the White King diving in, still dangerous for Maxime here. White has, uh, actually, actually, White's got a great position here. Yeah. I mean, White is actually going to pick up 
The G6 pawn is off the board and Maxim's hopes for a draw is all dependent on his advanced pawn there on E3 and that's why he's chasing it till the end of the world but oh it's a race. Yeah and White's pawns are just too strong. White can even give his rook up for that pawn. It's looking great for Duda. Two pawns versus one. What's better than one pawn? Two pawns and the White King is going to advance and queen that pawn. They're both trying to queen their pawns here but it was a win for Duda. Duda playing perfect chess to secure the last remaining place at September's grand finale. But just as importantly, a rematch with reports to decide who wins the Europe and Africa qualifying event. At the start of the week, all eight players have been asked to predict who they thought that player would be. Vasile Legrave getting four votes, with three going to Poland's strongest chess player and the 2021 European Blitz champion. No one had selected reports, but it proved his rivals wrong. As the first game of the final matchup got underway, he was showing why. I always like this approach from White. I mean, it's so easy for White to play. He brings his queen nearer to the Black King. And the problem is for Black, those white pawns, they're just going to go bomb, 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 open up the Black King, and the Black King just looks too exposed. He gets his rook behind one of those pawns. Duda is desperately trying to open up White's King. It's a race. Those pawns on both sides of the board are just trying to pry open the safety net that the King is doing, but White is just quicker in this position. White's pawns, it's a race, and White's well ahead in the race. I, I mean, just take a look at this. I mean, it almost feels like quick maths. You know, you have the Queen, the Rook, the Light Square Bishop, and two pawns there are gonna be primed to attack the Black King. And then take a look at White's King. One pawn, one pawn that is worth one point is coming towards the White King. Uh, I think I know whose king is in danger, and it's not White. Yeah, on the next move, White will move his pawn to attack Black's queen, and just to add a bit of insult to injury, Duda is going down on the clock. Look at his time, he's got 24 seconds. Rickard just can push the pawn now. He's got other good moves as well. His bishop can come in, but this is a very nasty move. And now that pawn is a little champion. It can keep on munching. You can even move your bishop in. I think just sneaking your bishop into the middle might win material oh, here. Oh no, this was the move that I thought Ooh, you were thinking about. Nice. So that the queen can come in with a kapow. I'm thinking of Batman there. And uh, what is like 17 it. seconds <laughs> and <laughs> ticking <laughs> down. <laughs> and Duda's position is dire. Oh. It is, and maybe just pawn takes pawn here, finishes the game off. Is he going to do that? Does he have something better? Uh, he's, he's going check, and now that was a killer. Oh, a beautiful move there, forcing checkmate. A dominating opening by reports, leaving him just a draw away from overall victory. Game two then, with Duda playing white on the left of the board and needing a win to force an Armageddon decider. White is just going forwards and forwards. There's what we call an outpost in this position. If you get an outpost in the center of the battlefield, it's a great victory, like a battle, if you can hold the ground. And White has one square that his knight will be able to jump into. Can you spot that square at home? The White Knight on the left-hand side at some point can jump right into the middle, and that is horrible for Black. But you don't need to rush that plan even. No, you don't need to rush at all. And uh, there we see Richard just play, make a very defensive move, just simply step up with the Rook and reinforce the protection of the F7 pawn. But Duda, he is just building. He is preparing this G4, G5 push. And I did wonder whether Richard would just get fed up and try to make an active break. And he goes and says, UK, let's take my rook. But Duda says, no, let me attack your queen instead. Yeah, and this is the square I was talking about, the outpost, that knight jump attacks the black queen. The queen kind of has to move and the black rook is in no man's land as well. You can, t you can capture that rook now if you want to. Duda being a deadly assassin here and he has just taken the rook so now white has a nice material advantage Rickard has got to get those bishops working somehow his only chance 
is on the dark squares here. If Ricard can get his queen and his bishop on the same line towards white's king, that will create some chances. I can't see any other way that things could be generated here. Yeah, and uh, there we see Richard quickly adopting your plan. He wants to set up a battery with his queen and bishop looking at the h2 square. I agree with you there, Simon. I mean, his black's position would be okay if his light square bishop was great, but his light square bishop is completely uh, just Ooh. frozen in. Yeah, and uh, whoa. I'm not so sure about this now. Ricard only has 10 seconds, but move your queen. Just give up the pawn. Get your queen into the middle. You've it's got seven, seven seconds. seconds. Okay. Oh. I mean, this is also an okay move. On the next move, the black queen can come into the middle. And does he do that? No, he didn't have a chance. I think he missed an opportunity there to go active because of his time situation. He had to get that queen into the middle. It's still a bit messy though. Black's dark squares, the bishop is not a bad piece. If that queen can go two squares up at the right moment, he might be able to get a big attack against Duda. Duda getting nervous now. You can see his facial action there. And here it comes. Can the queen come in? Yeah, she absolutely it, has it's to come, come in. in. And I think this could be very bad news for White. That queen is threatening to come in with a perpetual check. Duda down to 20 seconds. The queen comes into the position. That queen is looking deadly. Can it keep checking the White King here? The bishop takes the pawn. It's all about that black queen. Can you keep the checks up here? Duda needs to get that queen out of dodge. Duda getting nervous as well. Yeah, though. and now he's under 10 seconds on the clock. Okay, so Duda trying to initiate a queen trade. But uh, what's happening here? And oh, did he spot this one? The bishop is coming in and attacking the rook. They're both so short a time here. Five seconds against four, three, two, one. And Ricard is going in with the queen. The queen is attacking the king. He's got a counter-attack going, but he has no time on his clock. They're both down just to deadly seconds in this two, final one. here. Oh, just keep, it's too exciting, this. The white king running around <laughs> in the middle and black attacking everything with his bishops. One second, second. left. Uh, he's lost, he's lost the, time. the time. Unbelievable. Ricard Report is the champion of the European and African leg. Congratulations to Ricard. A brilliant result for Report, more than earning his place at September's grand finale. But Duda can console himself with the fact he'll be going there as well. So the final eight have been decided from four qualifying events with just the grand finale left to decide who will be crowned 2023 Armageddon Championship Series winner. We'll be back at the World Chess Club Berlin in September to find out who that's going to be. So join us then for the climax of an extraordinary tournament.